In this video, we are going to look at another technique of interprocess communication known as pipes. Pipes, they create a conduit which allows two processes to communicate. So you can think of a pipe which can be used by two processes to share information. So one process can write information into the pipe and another process can read from this particular pipe. Typically, a parent process will create the pipe and then it will use this pipe to communicate with the child process. This pipe is a special type of file. We know that the child inherits all open files from its parent. So this pipe which has been created by the parent will also be inherited by the child. And pipes can be constructed using the call system called pipe and we give an integer array as a parameter to this function. Now this call which gives this, para, uh, this integer array as a parameter, this integer array is of size 2 and the pipe will function will return two file descriptors fd0 and fd1. fd0 will be the read end of the pipe. So if you can imagine the pipe as this, so this is the representing FD0 which is the read end and both the child and the parent can read from this end of the pipe. FD1 file descriptor is representing the right end of the pipe. That means using this file descriptor, both the parent and the child can write into the pipe. So this function pipe it actually allows um, the processes to communicate so this creates a mechanism by using this file descriptor fd1 the process one process can write into the buffer which has been created in the kernel space and the other process by uh, using the file descriptor fd0 can access the information available in the buffer so let us take an example to see how this can work. Here we want that only the parent should be writing into the pipe. That means we don't want the child to write into the pipe so we will have to disable that. Also we want that from the read end only the child should be reading. That means we don't want the parent to read. So we will disable the read access of the parent. Now, first of all, we will define the size of the buffer that we want to create in the kernel space to write our messages. Here in this example, we have created a buffer uh, of size 25. There is, there is a character array of size buffer size which is read message and another character array again of buffer size where we are writing a message and we have written a message let's say greetings into that buffer. Now we declare a integer array over here which is of size 2 and a PID type of the process ID type which is a the uh, defining the ID of a particular process. Now we give the system call over here pipe fd. So we have passed this integer array into the call system call over here and if this results or returns a minus 1 this shows that the creation of the pipe has failed. So there will be an error message which will say that pipe failed this will be printed out onto the standard error and a 1 will be returned. If the creation of the pipe was successful, now please note over here that this, this program is currently in the address space of the parent. So the parent is executing this particular program. If minus 1 was not returned, that means the pipe has been created by the parent. Now the parent is forking a child. So here a child has been created. If this fork command it resulted in a negative return value that means the child process was not created. So we, we can print out 
a statement saying that fork failed and return one. These are standard uh, programs which are written for creating a process and that this has been discussed earlier in one of the earlier video lectures. If the creation of the child was successful, that means PID was greater than 0. If PID is greater than 0, that means this is we are talking about the parent process because fork will return the PID of the child to the parent and it will return a value 0 to the child. This is the standard return values of the fork system call. If PID is greater than 0, that means we are in the environment of the parent process. Now, what do we want for the parent? We do not want the parent to read from the pipe. So, the, the read end is defined by FD0. So, for the parent, we will close FD0. That means the parent is not able to access this end of the file because pipe is a special type of file only. And then also we want the parent to write into the pipe. So we will use this file descriptor for the parent to write into the file. So the parent we will write at this end. We will use the character array where we had given this message and the length of the message. After we have written into the pipe and we do not want any further communication, then we can close the right end also by doing close FD1. We can do this after writing the message. Now for the child process, we go into the else environment that means FD uh, the PID is equal to 0. Since PID was greater than 0, then we are in the parent process. Now, if PID is equal to 0, then we are in the child process. For the child, we want that the child should only be able to read, but it should not be able to write. So, we will have to close the right end of the pipe for the child. So, we write close FD1 because FD1 is representing the right end. Now we want the child to read the message that is available in the pipe and which was written by the process. So using the read end file descriptor which is FD0, we will read what, what is there in the pipe and we will read the message and the buffer size which has been defined earlier. Once the child process has read that message, it can print out that message also and if no further communication is required, it does not want to read anything else from the pipe, we can close the read end also. So this is how the pipe can be used for inter-process communication. Suppose we do not want one-way communication but we want a two-way communication, then we can create two pipes. So we can have pipe 0 and we can have pipe 1. Now for the pipe 1, let us say for pipe 0, both the processes child process and the parent process can write and both the processes can read from the other end. Similarly for pipe 1, both processes can write into this end and read from the other end. For a two-way communication, we suppose want that one process should be writing into one pipe and the other process should be writing into another pipe. So let us say for pipe 0, we want the parent process to write. That means we will close the right end of the child which is PD FD1 which is defining the right end for a process. And now for pipe 0, we want only the child process to read. So we will close this file descriptor for the parent. For pipe 1, we want only the child process to write. So again, we will have to disable the FD1 uh, for the parent and now we want the parent only to read. So we will close the read file descriptor for the child. So after closing all the unnecessary ends, we can provide a two-way communication between the parent and the child.